Hey there, my name's Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, there's been lots of interest about the Snapdragon X Elite, Qualcomm's brand new processor for laptops. It's got a 12 core custom designed CPU in it based on the ARM instruction set. And some people were so amazed by the numbers that Qualcomm were quoting in terms of performance and also power efficiently, literally in the comments they say, I just don't believe this. This is just not true. Well, now we've got some early benchmarks. So let's find out. So when Qualcomm announced the Snapdragon X Elite at its Snapdragon Summit, it did present some very interesting performance numbers. This is a kind of an amalgamated chart that I've got from the different slides that Qualcomm presented. Basically, you've got three different Intel laptop processors here uh, compared to the performance and the amount of energy power used by the Snapdragon X Elite. And you can see the Snapdragon X Elite is much better, so you can get the same uh, level of performance from much lower power. It turned out that the uh, uh, the 10 core laptop chip was an i7-1355U with 10 cores, two performance cores, eight efficiency cores. The 12 core one was the i7-1360P, four performance cores, eight efficiency cores. And the 14 core one was an i7-13800H with six performance cores and eight efficiency cores. Remembering that the Snapdragon has got 12 performance cores and no efficiency cores. Now we have some actual benchmark numbers that we've kind of semi-verified ourselves. What happened during the Snapdragon Summit, journalists and other attendees were allowed into an air-conditioned room with several Qualcomm design laptops with the Snapdragon X Elite inside of the laptops. Journalists were not allowed to touch the devices, however Qualcomm employees were on hand to start various benchmarks including uh, Geekbench 6 and uh, Cinebench. And there were two types of laptops available for demonstration. There was one with an 80 watt maximum thermal configuration, big screen, 87 watt, watt hour battery, 64 gigabytes of RAM running Windows on the Snapdragon, and a second configuration, much lower one, 23 watts. Uh, again, big screen, 58 watt hour battery, 64 gigabytes of RAM, again, running Windows on Snapdragon. As a comparison, uh, the i7-13800H is a 45 watt processor that boosts to 115 watts. So the idea here is that the Snapdragon X Elite scales from smaller machines, so maybe you want a 14 inch device without any fans in it, up to an 80 watt, so maybe you want a bigger device, 17 inch one, maybe with active cooling. So different kind of processors can be used and maybe it'll even make itself into some kind of mini PCs as well. That would be quite interesting. So where do those two laptops fit on this chart? Well, basically this is the 23 watt one. So we can see it's on the curve. There's greater performance to be had as you go up higher. So it looks to me as if there's kind of a sweet spot around 40, 45 watts. And then really this one goes right to the end of what you can push it to, 80 watts maybe. You can push it even higher if you put it in a kind of a desktop scenario. But that's the 80 watt one. But this is definitely diminishing returns on the performance increase that you get here compared to the amount of power. And in fact, we'll see that in the graphs, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So the first one we've got here is Geekbench 6, single core and multi-core scores. A couple of things to note. First of all, yes, the Snapdragon X Elite has the best uh, of those processors we're comparing, single core and multi core. Now, I don't have any of these processors here to test myself, so I'm getting some of these numbers from cpumonkey.com and from browser.geekbench.com. I have kind of cross verified them with other reviews on the web to make sure they are in the right ballpark. So let's look at that as a graph. So what we're seeing here is that the best single 3D performance is from the Snapdragon X Elite. Even when it's running in that 23 watt mode, that's better than the M2 Pro that you get in a MacBook Pro, and even better here when you bump it up to even that higher thermal budget. And of course, multi-core does depend on the number of cores you've got. And uh, of course, when you go to a 14 core, this is getting up higher and higher and higher compared to its friends here. Thing to remember is that the Snapdragon X Elite, as I said, has got 12 performance cores. Uh, and then you've got the M2 Pro. This is, of course, the big one that everyone's in their mind. Now, it is slightly faster than the Snapdragon X Elite when you're running in its 23 watt mode, but not when you bump it up to 80 watts. So it'll be interesting to see what laptops Qualcomm's partners release. Uh, you know, uh, next year to see what kind of uh, wattage we're going to have. And yes, I am, of course, acutely aware there is a Apple event 
imminent, which uh, we're expecting some new announcements and may include the M3. So this data will obviously, I'll have to update this in the future when we've got the M3 uh, and so on. Now talking of the sweet spot for the Snapdragon X Elite, notice here that you go from 23 watts to 80 watts, that's a 247 uh, increase in the power that you need, but actually only for a 9% uplift in multi-threaded performance. And in fact, I think this one here, from my memory right, is about 6%. So really, you can keep adding in that power, but as I showed you on that previous graph, you're not gonna get that much more performance. So there does definitely seem to be a sweet spot. As I said, 30 watts, 40 watts, 45 watts really would be a sweet uh, Snapdragon X Elite that gives you the maximum performance and the maximum battery life. So that will be interesting to see what Qualcomm's partners make. Of course, if this was put into a mini PC kind of setup, plugged into the mains, uh, then of course you can have some fans on it and things, and that really uh, would be uh, good as well. And the other one is Cinebench 2024. Now I don't have the results for those uh, two i7s there, so I put in two other ones. I've got the Ryzen 7. 7700, which is eight core, 16 threads at 65 watts. That's a desktop processor. And the i7 12700K, and of course that's one generation before, that's the 13th generation here, 12th generation, 12 cores, 20 threads, 125 watts. So again, a desktop processor. I thought that'd be interesting to see how they were. Again, I'm relying on sites like CPU Monkey, which I'm not affiliated with in any way whatsoever, to give me these results. So what do we see? Again, we see that the Snapdragon X Elite has the highest uh, of the single threaded scores, even beating these uh, desktop processors. And multi-threaded, well, yes, we see a lot going on here in multi-threading, 125 watt uh, machine here, uh, and it just goes out here, but it doesn't beat the 80 watt version of the Snapdragon X Elite. And as we can see here, the M2 Pro uh, is beaten here by the Snapdragon X Elite, the 23 watt version, according to Cinebench 2024. So really, really interesting. This does seem to be that the numbers that Qualcomm are giving us look like this is gonna be an amazing machine. Obviously, when we can buy consumer devices, that will be the actual proof of it all, the final proof. But I'm very excited for what we're gonna what we're gonna see. And as I did say, yes, of course, there will be other processes announced by Intel, AMD, and Apple over the next year as well. So the competition is always fierce, the competition is always moving along. But a lot of potential here for the Snapdragon X Elite to be quite amazing uh, in laptops. Okay, so there we have it, the benchmarks, early benchmarks for the Snapdragon X Elite. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below what you think about this whole saga of the new processor from Qualcomm. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.